So we are going to talk about few medical keyword or terminology about the nose. What are the common nose diseases? Allergic rhinitis. Hmm? What is allergic rhinitis? It is the inflammation of the nose caused by allergen or allergies. Allergic rhinitis sign symptom nasal congestion, itchy and sneezing. Allergic rhinitis can be can be coughing due to the post nasal drip. So as a healthcare provider, how we assessment our patient? If we see any bluish or pale color or swollen the nasal turbinate. Hmm? So if nasal turbinate is swollen, congested red, it is maybe it is allergic rhinitis. Also clear mucus present or can have circle under the eye. What are the treatment of allergic rhinitis? We use the uh, topical nasal spray. What is the most common nasal spray we use? Usually steroid. It is called fluticasone. Fluticasone nasal spray. Hmm? Or also we can use the tri amnicillolone one or two spray per day. Some doctor also prescribe the medication. It is called keto tiffin. Keto tiffin is allergic uh, uh, suppression properties. It's very effective, but you have to use for a longer time. If that does not work, topical antihistamine nasal spray we also can apply. Other medication can also use, it is called decongestant. But decongestant, not for the kids. Oral antihistamine, use the second generation antihistamine, like Zetac, we can buy over the counter, or uh, Clarithrin, because less sedation and also cause eliminate trigger or like in you have to avoid the allergen pollen dust might it's good to avoid so what we learn from here we learn allergy rhinitis we use fluticasone nasal spray or try amni Ceylon nasal spray. If it doesn't work, we can use antihistamine nasal spray. Also, we can use decongestant, but decongestant not for the children. Oral antihistamine. Usually, use the second generation antihistamine like uh, Zetac, Clarithrin, also very useful. Why second generation? Because second generation is a less sedation effect and also the cause elimination trigger yeah they avoid the dust or allergen rhinitis midi uh, rhinitis medica um, mentosa so i mean <laughs> it is actually not english okay uh, french language or Okay, so or Spanish language. So, so uh, in case of severe, the chronic nasal congestion from prolonged use of topical nasal decongestant like uh, phenylephrine can cause rebound swelling. It is important to know. The other treatment option stop to the nasal decongestant spray and tell them to use the nasal saline spray like fruticasone.
but fluticasone also used for a longer time is not good but it is very good medication for allergic rhinitis hmm, or rhinitis so nasal polyp uh, it is little bit growth in the nose the treatment is intranasal glucocorticoids so glucocorticoid also steroid fruticasone also steroid but different categories so if the recurrent we need to refer ENT doctor or who is very specialized to the uh, otolaryngology or who is very uh, specialized to rhinology you can tell them to so either if any bleeding occurs suddenly from the nose it is called epistaxis so epistaxis means nose bleed the treatment applied direct pressure nasal decongestant also over the counter we can buy it is called aflin or can use petroleum jelly for nose if recurrent it is good to refer specialized doctor who is very specialized to ENT and so went to watch out for posterior nasal bleed is can have always so refer to it. yeah ED, right? Emergency department. So, epistaxis, sometimes NCLEX would ask if a patient has an epistaxis, uh, who, what should be the underlying cause? Hypertension. So, who have a hypertension and uncontrolled, they have a chance of bleeding nose. Also, nasal polyp can cause the bleed. So, now few questions about the mouth and pharynx. So mouth and pharynx normally it is look like pink color, moist mucous membrane. Okay. And how many uh, danger? 32 for adult, right? And uvula in the midline, okay? If displays can be infected or absence so key uh, terminology here or on top flesh here means pain on swallowing and also christmas means jaw muscle spasm some terminology and here mouth abnormalities is called evolved tooth means complete displacement of tooth out of each socket. Dental emergency, it is the dental emergencies. If it is primary in a kid, do not re-implant it. If permanent, touch only the crown part with a normal saline or raise the tools and also irrigate the socket then re-implant tools also have them bite down immediately refer to the dentist if cannot re-implant it also store the tooth in or cool in meal normal saline inside the check cheek so it is called evolved uh, tooth and another uh, medical terminology here is called leukoplakia or aphthous stomatitis. Hmm? So leukoplakia, the keyword here, it is a white gray patch in the mouth or in the tongue, inside the, uh, the cheek or along the side of the tongue, slightly raised cannot be brushed out always rule out the oral cancer we have to rule out the risk factor tobacco use alcohol drinking or diagnosis uh, we have to we diagnose by biopsy 
and treatment is surgical excision. Suggestion of the risk factor and frequent clinical observation is important. It, what is called? It is called leukoplakia. Aphthosa stomatitis, it is sometimes called creca sore. Also, he lose seven to ten days. It is painful. And cause is unknown. The treatment, uh, magic mouthwash every four hours because it's painful, it can reduce. Can, you can also use over the counter options such as some cream or ointment. So, another one is called mumps. Mumps. Mumps is a virus infection of salivary gland. And this leads to the symptoms such as swelling of salivary. Also, it's called parotid glands. Hmm? So, in mumps, the pain when they chewing or swallowing, fever, headache, muscle ache, mumps need to be re, re uh, uh, ported to local or state health department. So, important, right? For the complication, mumps can lead to meningitis if untreated, can cause pancreatitis, and most danger for the children or titers, inflamed testes. So if it is not treated within 48 hours, the baby have a chance to infertility lifelong infertile and also inflammations of the heart so orchitis is most dangerous so when baby is present with this it is good to go with a good uh, treatment so what is called geographic tongue so page on tongue appears as highland and look a map like this is actually patch they move and migrate to different parts of tongue it is benign condition can cause increase the sensitivity to sepsis or salt so another one is called chilosis chilosis means the corner of the mouth become inflamed and cracking or pain at the corner. Multiple causes and treatment check level vitamin B12, remove the cause, and if the cause is yeast, right? Yeast is like a pathogen or antigen. So if the cause is yeast, Topical antifungal ointment is important. So we can use topical antifungal ointment if infection is spread out or if infection because of Staphylococcus bacteria, right? We need culture and sensitivity test. So here are the small and white spot with a red rings in the mouth is a symptoms of measles so here we can see a picture and this picture uh, this one is a parotid gland right and this is submandibular gland and this is sublingual gland sub means below the tongue so all of this gland secret the saliva and help to eat food chewing food help to deglutition food right if anybody's saliva is dry do not secret salivary gland is most common some kind of autoimmune disease hmm? and that is now we are going to focus on 
some abnormalities in fittings. So peritoneal abscess. So what is that? Peritoneal abscess, it is the abscess of formed in the throat next to the tonsil. And what are the underlying cause of peritonsil abscess? Usually tonsillitis. Hmm. The most common symptom, difficulty of swallowing, so throat, and tris, uh, trismus or muffle, hot potato voice, swollen gland or some uh, patient present the fever, chill, and you can see the abscess when patient open the mouth. It is medical emergency and we have to refer immediately to uh, e, uh, emergency department. The yeah, other problem is called diphtheria, is bacterial infection. Bacteria infection really uh, release the toxic that causes the gray tissue to accumulate in the throat. On assessment, you will see this patch of gray yellow coating the pharynx and tonsil area. This lead to symptom or the most common symptom are sore throat, swollen neck and use. Most people are vaccinated again it with a T tab vaccine. T tab DAP. So titanus, diphtheria, and pertussis vaccine together. It is spread the airborne. Very contagious and it is medical emergency. It is good to uh, refer the ED. So what else? So varpus node means is an enlarged left supraclavicular lymph node and also associated with uh, malignancy or cancer especially in abdomen throat areas also it is good to refer to the surgery and also to the biopsy step to coccal pharyngitis also known as step thought so pharyngitis because of streptococcal bacteria it is an infection causes by bacteria like group a streptococcus if with cough and other sign symptom hmm? So we have to check if patient present with the sore throat, fever, painful swallowing. So beside the bacteria evaluate, we have to evaluate the virus as well. On assessment, we could get throat will be pink and red, tonsillar exudent, and also petechia or if you check, we can get uh, fatigue here and heart pellet. And last, anterior cervical lymph node. So if we palpate the lymph node in the neck and axilla, we chance to get palpable anterior cervical lymph node. So what next? So to help with diagnosis, use the uh, Centaur criteria. Centaur criteria is tonsillar exudate. Also tender anterior cervical adenopathy. Sometimes patient present with fever, absence of cough in general. Zero to one 
means no test patient or no treatment required two to three in scale rapid step treatment important and for treatment need a broad spectrum antibiotics or it is what are the other diagnosis rapid antigen detection test also sent to the specimen for culture and sensitivities so treatment oral amoxicillin 500 milligram two times a day for 10 days or oral penicillin usually 500 milligram two times a day for 10 days if allergy to amoxicillin it is good to give alternative most common are azithromycin it's called z back and also untreated uh, staphylococcus can lead to the uh, scarlatina scarlet fever or rheumatoid fever or glomerulonephritis inflammation of the glomerulus in the kidney the other disease is called infectious mononucleosis the most common cause epstein barr virus commonly the teenage to young adult year the symptom basically fever sore throat or lymphadenopathy also patient present with fatigue assessment tonsillar exudate posterior cervical lymph node present or other findings like splenomegaly skin rash red throat positive mono uh, spot elevated the left uh, liver function test atypical lymphadeno lympho, uh, lymphocytosis means lymphocyte present in the blood the treatment if acute states no heavy uh, spot for four weeks use for a splenomegaly if abnormal repeat it uh, four to six weeks and also symptomatic treatment is important so you spleen spleen get bigger in size okay infectious mononucleosis here few diseases about the lymph node and sinuses first of all let me show you the picture in this picture these two sinus is called frontal sinus and there are two is called ethmoidal sinus and two bigger one is called maxillae sinus this they are bones but this bones is a spongy bones very light they contain the air and because of this content of air our skull or head is lighter right they also help us to phonation make a sound okay so if the inflammation occur we call sinusitis next picture we can see here this picture showing different chain of lymph node lymph node is a part of lymphoid system the formation antibody or immunoglobin we can see that here just be front of the ear it is called pre auricular auricle means ear behind of the auricle called post auricular and this is over the occipital bones occipital and this is called sub uh, jugulo digestic digest uh, di, um, di, uh, digestic 
And this is over the, this is the bigger muscle in our neck. It is called sternocleidomastoid muscle. This it is called superior clavicle. So this is the clavicle, right? So this one is cervical chain. So it is superficial cervical. This is posterior cervical. And this is supraclavicular because it is the top of the clavicle bones. And this is submental. And this is basically below the mandible called submandibular. Right? So, in case of some diseases or leukemia or lymphoma or any kind of cancer like breast cancer, lymph node get involved and lymph node get bigger, we call palpable lymph node. Usually lymph nodes should be uh, not palpable. If it is palpable, there's some underlying cause. Most of the lymph node, if bigger size, palpable, non-pain, non-tender, might be malignancies. So let me read it. Sinuses means air filled cavity in the bones of skull. There are four pairs maxillary, frontal, ethmoidal, and spanoid sinuses. They're lined with a mucus, and the mucus drain into the nasal cavities through the small opening. When sinus block should build up and bacteria and virus get grow and grow, grow and cause infections. Anterior cervical node enlarges with a viral or bacterial infections and also posterior cervical node enlarges with a single uh, bacteria. Other diseases in this it is called acute bacterial rhinosinusitis. So means sinus infected because of bacteria and nose get involved, rhino. So infection of the both your nasal cavity and sinuses most common symptom, facial pain, nasal congestion, post-nasal drip. On assessment, sinuses are tender touch, yellow or green post-nasal drip. The treatment option sim uh, symptomatic if is mild. All right. And uh, healthy patient present with full of i mean full course of the 10 days if or can treat with antibiotics if severe symptoms or immunocompromised patient also need antibiotics the first line antibiotics basically amoxicillin and clavo clavulanate so it is the antibiotics but when antibiotics work with these agents antibiotic is get more powerful more uh, effective for the body combination amoxicillin amoxicillin and clavulonic acid if recurrent it is good to refer auto laryngologist what else now we are going to talk a system related review and first system about the nervous system so nervous system um, it is shortly called cns central nervous system mental status we need to exam or mini mental examination for cognitive abnormalities motor means related to the muscle and sensory what is uh, related to the uh, sensations right and also some reflexes 
to test the cerebellum we have to check the gait it is regular walking or not also we have to check any abnormal gait or tandem gait tandem gait means walk straight with one feet in front of others if they do it is good rapid alternating movements hand on knee or flap hands over and back fast or heel to sin it is the test we tell your patient to do this and means patient lie down on their back and one heel goes up and down the others sin also it is called heel to sin test finger to nose so patient close their eye and tell them to touch their nose by one finger finger to nose and nose to finger right in the test ability is the test for uh test for cerebellum so now if unable to perform any of this test means it should be positive we need to evaluate and next here it is proprioception proprioception means it is awareness so you are aware about your body right or perception or awareness position and movement of the body so like i close my eye but still i know where is my hand right i want to give a different example my friend when you drive your car right when you drive your car you easily understand how far the next car or you easily understand uh, your car is in the land you do not cross it because your car when you drive you feel it is a part of your body your sense is very active that time but it is not talk about the proprioception but proprioception about your body so you can understand where is your body right perception or awareness of the position and movement of your body so sensory information think of close your eye like with the pin the tail on the donkey or relying on proprioceptions test with rhombus one of the tests is called Rombach test. So feel together, hand outstretched in front of close your eye and positive if they are aware. So Rombach test, basically the test that measure your sense of balance. It typically used to diagnose the problem with your balance which is composed to your visual or vestibular or proprioceptives proprioceptive means position sense vestibular means inner ear system during the neurological exam so it is very important rombach test let me recap it I said this test that measure your sense of balance. Sensory can take the to pick to taste sharp or cotton to taste dull. So patient do not see, but they can answer. Yeah, it is sharp or it is dull. The other one is called um, stereo uh, stereo stereo uh, stereo stereo gnosis so what is that what is stereo gnosis so it is actually the mental perception of depth or any three dimensionally 
by the sense usually the refer to the ability to perceive the front of solid object by touch means like you i i will tell you close your eye and when you close your eye i give a mobile on your hand and then i can tell you what is that you see this mobile or i give a pen in your hand you feel and you can tell it is pen but you close his eye close your eye is closed eye is closed but you feel the object so if they can identify the things with just touch it close the eye and touch just by giving them something to hold while they close their eyes should be able to guess what is that hmm? so another one is called motor and reflexes motor test reflection extension flexion and extension right also r o m or pronation graph test hold hand out with a clamp facing up or i close count 30 second hand sh should not fall down if they do positive and can indicate the upper motor neural disease maybe patient has a stroke the reflexes are graded from zero to plus four so a grade a grade of two plus is normal at least you have to know this so another one is called dermato what is uh, dermato the key terminology here dermatomes dermatomes is an area of the skin that is innervated by a single spinal cord level right so easy way to say this is the area of the skin where is supplied one single nerve right so or you can say that dermatome is a wall of the each somite in the vertebrate embryo right somite means somatic cell give rise of the connective tissue of the skin and every tissue or area supplied by particular nerves right dermatome so all sensory neuron in that skin area are going to same spinal cord so when you test a specific area of the skin you can test the specific spinal cord area so any particular so example i want to show you a example this is i'm i am going to give one example example tip of the nose supplied by the particular nerve when you examine this tip of the nose if it is intact means that particular nerve is impact, intact if you touch the tip of the nose with a cotton and patient say oh it is uh, blunt if you touch the tip of the nose with a fine needle and your patient said yeah it is uh, sharp means that nerve is very intact so this area supplied by a particular nerve and this is called dermatome so again don't miss this dermatome with myotome or sclerotome this is different things so so all sensory neuron in the skin area are going to the same spinal cord level so when you test a specific area of skin you can test the specific spinal cord area here are some uh, keyword i'm going to discuss with you the first one is hemianosphere 
hemianospia means loss of vision or sometimes we can call blindness okay blindness over half of field of vision lots of vision but half so it is hemianospia and second one is called aphrexia so what is aphrexia aphrexia is a neurological symptom basically right and you characterized by a difficulty in performing daily tasks even if the instructions are understood usually the person who have it the loss of ability to perform skill movement or gesture so the person affected finds is difficult right even difficult to tie up their shoe lace place or button the shirt difficult to making certain facial expression as well the next one is aphasia aphasia means cannot um, comp uh, comprehend or formulate the language so it is a comprehens uh, comprehension or communication problem reading speaking writing or disorder related from damage or injury to the specific area of the brain it is aphasia and next go this is called vernix vernixia uh, or vernica aphasia means also known as receptive aphasia difficult with uh, comprehension right difficult of comprehension so basically uh, varnishia aphasia a region of the brain constant with a comprehension of language located in context of dominant the temporal lobe or damage this area causes the vernica aphasia characterized by superficial fluent grammatical speech but in inability to use or understood more than one most basic noun or verbs yeah, this is called broca boca aphasia also known as um, expressive aphasia difficult with talking part of speech right so another one is called s um, s uh, s stereo s diagnosis cannot recognized familial object or in hand so recognition problem right so recognition problem that causes you to have a trouble identify the object by ending them with your eye when you closed or without seeing them it's sometimes also called tractile agno cr or somatosensory agnosia hmm? also it is important to know um estrogenosis uh, or tractile agnosia is the inability to identify any objects by active touch of hand without other sensory input such as visual or sensory information next one is confabulation confabulation means lie down because it cannot remember the event lie so confabulation may be a symptom of a related condition 
basically and generate a false memory without a intention or deficit so you 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 forget it and you saying and it's not match it is the medical condition right you are not a liar but you tell something different and people say it is like confabulation so when the patient have confabulation the most uh, uh, common uh, the cause the confabulation may be symptom i told you related to any other medical condition and really i mean the most of the time patient present to memory loss forgetfulness misplacing the item or repeated themselves regularly okay confabulation also common in schizophrenia mental problem and if you ask me what are the treatment the self treatment is important or it is good to notify um, tell the specialized doctor and last one from here it is called dyskinesia dyskinesia means uncontrolled involuntary movement of the face arm and legs dyskinesia is abnormal jerking so cranial nerve number one it is olfactory so is it way to remember we have a one nose number one olfactory the function is smell and sense so or you can say as the na name suggests olfactory this nerve is related with the sense of smell and it is it has a receptor in our nose or mucus of the nasal cavity and sensation fiber travel to the olfactory bulb that passing different opening in the uh, I mean in the nose or cavities next one is two optic we have a two eye and so it is optics so optic nerve if you read the name optics as the name suggests this nerve related to the vision right and also arises from retina and transmit the visual signal to the brain if we need to check we use the snail chart next is oculomotor number three number four trochlear and number six abducens these three nerves related to the movement of our eye so you see eom extra ocular movement of eye patient follow your finger and all direction if their eye move means intact cranial number three four and six oculomotor it is it is the third cranial nerve and this nerve basically arises from basal plate in front of our superior uh, i mean superior colliculus in the brain and next one is a trochlear trochlear nerves or, the, or fourth cranial nerves is the only cranial nerves that arise from dorsal aspect of our midbrain right and number six is abducens abducens is six cranial nerves it is arise the middle uh, medial to facial nerve right and this nerve has a efferent fiber and supply lateral erector's muscle and number five is a triseminal so as the name indicate the nerve has a three branches tri tri means they have a ophthalmic branch maxillary branch and mandibular branches so uh, this uh, motor nerves this nerve is a mixed form 
they have their sensory and motor right so this touch forehead check cheek and chin lightly while they close the eye and next one seven it is facial nerve so facial nerve supply the muscle in the face and they are that is the why we called facial nerve and it has also sensory fiber for facial and taste sensation mm -hmm. and facial nerve basically emerges between the medulla and pons lateral to the abducens nerve facial is they say look up wrinkle forehead and smile means your facial nerve is intact and next one is eight it is called Orchestics or vestibulocochlear nerve, right? So this nerve arises in the between the junction between pons and medulla. This nerve is concerned with the hearing and balance of the body, vestibulocochlear, because it has a two division in cochlear and vestibule. Cochlear nerve is concerned with the hearing and vestibular nerve concerned with balance of the body. So eight cranial nerves is damage of this nerve may cause the loss of hearing or sensation of motion or loss of equilibrium. So eye close, snap finger in front of their eye or wrap the ear together in front of the ear. The two tests we do, one is called Rini test and Webner test. Rini test on mastered bone we use and Webner tongue for, tongue tuning for on the vertex of the head. The next one is number nine, it is glossopharyngeal nerve. Glossopharyngeal, so this is the mixed type of nerve, means sensory and motor both. And has a, I mean, uh, both sensory and motor fiber and parasympathetic as well. And this nerve has many function in our body. Okay, many function as it supplies the many different organ. And this nerve basically arises the medulla and lifts the cranium via jugular for for a man. So. Glossophangeal nerve, they said G for gag reflex and for glossophangeal and G look like the upside down line. So this nerve is important to swallow open mouth and gag reflex. So the question comes if uh, which nerve responsible for gag reflex glossophangeal, right? So this gives it gives several branches in in its course which are basically tympanic membrane staphylopharyngeal nerve nerve to the carotid sinus uh, lingual nerve tonsillar nerve and pharyngeal nerve hmm? so it is very it is very uh, various sensory and motor functions right so number 10, it is called Vegas nerve. So Vegas tested cranial nerve 9, also check the pulse. So Vegas nerve arises from its four nuclei that are situated in medulla. And it then descends down into the neck and abdomen by pass to the jugular foramen. So, as I told you, the Vegas nerve is used. Uh, just think of Las Vegas, Vegas nerve. I would give Las Vegas rate 10 out of 10 because number 10 cranial nerve is Vegas. And then many branches of Vegas nerve, like thoracic cardiac branches, pharyngeal nerve, superior cervical cardiac branches, inferior cervical cardiac branches superior laryngeal nerve, 
vagal tongue anterior posterior and esophageal plexus branches right and number 11 is called um, spinal accessories some books say accessory nerves only okay so accessory nerve or 11th cranial nerve is another cranial nerves which is an exceptions of the other cranial nerves unlike other cranial nerves the nerves has the two parts cranial parts that arise from medulla and the spinal part they arise from cervical part the spinal part ascend uh, ascend via foramen and joint cranial part to the make accessory nerves and next one here Inflex board sometimes asks question which nerve is related to the shrug shoulder? This is the cranial nerves 11 or accessory nerves. Last one here is the 12 cranial nerves. 12 cranial nerves, uh, if you read the name, it is called hypoglossal. As the name indicates, this nerve related to our tongue. And this nerve basically passing below the tongue as the name suggests hypo means below right and glossal means tongue so it is below the tongue hypo glossal right so puberty age think of teenage chewing gum speaks uh, disrespectfully hypoglossal Right. So this nerve supply motor fiber to all of the muscles to the tongue, except one that is uh, uh, palatoglossus nerve, which is supplied by the 10th cranial nerves. So this is the very basic summary of all 12 cranial nerves. So keep it note, all 12 cranial nerves, a pair of cranial nerves, basically arise from the brain and brain stem except spinal a part of the accessory nerves and they, they supply all sensory and motor fiber to the different muscle and other organ in the head and neck areas so we have the test right we're going to talk and this is the test for sound lateralization. Okay. So webinar test is a test for lateralizations, right? And sound will be heard more in that year. So when we tap the tuning fork strongly on your palm and then Press the butt on the instrument on the top of the patient's head in the midline means vertex. Then we can feel it. Usually, patient where they hear the sound. Normally, the sound is heard in the center of the head and equal to the both ear. But the defective here, the set sound will be heard more than the that year. Sensory neural hearing loss. When this is the lateralization, means patient has a sensory neural hearing loss. Sound of the turning tuning fork will lateralize to the good ear, lateralized to good ear, and cannot visualize the issues. Maybe many injectors. If the conductive hearing loss, sound of turning fork will lateralize to barrier and you can visualize the issue maybe serum 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 and impact or which is called uh call it stair to stair both easily we can say uh dust in the ear and normally no lateralizations so can hear it equal to the both ear, the both in the same time. 